it's great to see you today. Uh, we're going to give a couple of minutes for the rest of the uh, registrants to join as well. So we'll start. Hope you're having a good, good day so far. Uh, yeah, that's right, Kefil. Um We will we'll record this webinar and uh, we'll share it afterwards as well, so you can share between your colleagues. Yeah, this webinar is already recording. Yeah, guys, um, if you have any questions, please feel free um, to just type into a chat. Uh, there will be a q a session at the end uh, where we'll answer your questions just want to point out that this webinar um well i'm aiming to not take too much of your time and be very specific around the covid solutions so um probably aiming for about half an hour so 20 minutes on the actual webinar itself and then uh, maybe 10 minutes uh, or longer um for q a at the end uh, we have got an hour and a half allocated to this uh, for this webinar and um, obviously, we were here to answer all your questions and uh, we're not pushing you at all, so. I hope this webinar goes without a hitch. As you know, technology can be a little bit tricky sometimes and throw some curveballs, but we have done some test runs before this, so we, we will plan to have a smooth, smooth webinar today. Some more people are joining. Just going to give a few more minutes. I hope all of you have been healthy and staying safe through some unprecedented times. This COVID situation um, has changed the way we, we do our day-to-day -day business, and I hope with with our solutions we can we can help you combat this uh, when pandemic. Yeah, we've got a few more people joining. So just going to give them a couple more minutes. Uh, for those of you who just joined, thank you very much for joining this webinar. We're going to start in a minute. Just going to give a few more minutes for, for other people to join, just in case they're having some technical issues.
Okay, I guess we can start. Um, just seeing a few more people join, but I guess we can start because the this webinar will be recorded as well. And um, if anyone missed anything, we you know, will be able to uh, view it back once we release the, the recording. So first of all, again, I want to thank you all for joining this webinar uh, and I appreciate your time. Uh, today I would, I would like to, my name is Yuri, by the way, uh, Yuri Knezev. Uh, I'm one of the business development uh, managers for UK. And um, today we'll be talking about uh, some of the solutions we have been busy developing in light with the COVID-19 situation to help prevent and um, stop the spread of, uh, of the disease. And um, before I go into the solutions, I would like to introduce you to the company, just in case some of you might not be aware who Axonsoft is and uh, what we do. So Axonsoft is a global uh, video management and physical security information management software developer. The company has been around since 2003 and um, has grown exponentially. In those years we are covering most of the world now and we have offices in pretty much every region so um, if you are not uk based uh, wherever you are i'm pretty sure we have a, a local representatives or local offices that can work with you and answer any questions in your native language and uh, help you with any technical issues we've got projects that vary in size and um, verticals to give an example it can be from residential residential all the way to uh, safe city projects and uh, we've got um, we support pretty much all the hardware that's available on the market we are constantly integrating new devices and uh, device driver list is uh, growing month to month uh, and uh, we also support open protocols so um you, you can be rest assured we, we, we will most likely support the, uh, the the cameras and the other third party devices out of the box using some of the open protocols so axon soft has been busy in developing solutions for covid 19 um, pandemic and um, we have introduced real-time occupancy monitoring uh, analytics. These analytics are based on our already existing detectors, such as people counting and face, face counting. Uh, and we can actually um, calculate how many people are in the premises and um, automatically control doors and exits, uh, entrances and exits um, for to, to manage the occupancy of the, of the premises. Um, the, the, the system can be completely automated. We don't actually need uh, physical human interactions with the system uh, due to the extent, uh, powerful rules engines uh, that uh, our software um, provides and we can customize the analytics. Um, we, there, as I've mentioned, there are several ways we can uh, count people. Um, one of them is using the uh, standard people counting uh, detection, which um, if you look at the cam uh, image on the left, um, usually involves kind of looking at top down. And the way we do it is there is um, uh, two zones that we configure and the transition of, a, of a, an individual from one zone to the other will class as a, an entrance and in reverse it's an exit and we can have that um, uh, we, can, we, can, we can connect multiple entrances and exits to give a, a holistic picture um, and we, we can actually uh, as well as producing real-time events we can also produce reports retrospectively as well. So whether you want a, a monthly report or a weekly report on the, on the statistics, that can be done as well. These uh, um, detections can also be linked uh, to relays as well as uh, access control modules 
to have uh, for them to control the the doors automatically. Talking about access control, we also integrated with um, with two channel uh, with, with cameras and the um, body temperature detection cameras. As well as using our facial recognition to collate the data and uh, for tag and track uh, features. Um, if you see, uh, see on the video, what we're doing here is we are detecting the temperature of the individuals as they are scanning in for the entrance, and the turnstiles are automatically controlled by our software, so that way the uh, the person is restricted access. Uh, sh should the temperature exceed threshold set on the system, um, this, this uh, these detections can also raise real-time alerts for uh, so security or any personnel who needs to deal with the situation. And uh, we, as a, as I mentioned, all this data can also be uh, captured and produced into reports. We have um, integrated with cameras such as uh, Dahua, Hick, Hikogen, uh, as well as um, Robotics uh, and a few others to mention. Um, as I mentioned, we, we have got an extensive list of cameras that support it. So um, if I have missed uh, a manufacturer, it does not mean we will not work with them. Um, it just means uh, you know, we, we might need to check uh, the level of integration and um, if there are new cameras or new devices in the market, we can uh, integrate them quite quickly as well. We also capture metadata with the uh, face, uh, facial detection. Um, what we can do, where well, we can capture such as visual, uh, uh, fa facial features such as um, uh, facial hair, um, um, as well as the uh, some. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, so we can capture uh, facial features uh, such as um, a head headgear or uh, absence uh, or presence of masks, as well as um, uh, age and gender of an individual. So all these data can also be used uh, to produce additional demographics of individual visiting the premises. And it might be able to help uh, produce the statistical reports and maybe find some correlations between um, people who, who tend to have higher temperatures and uh, uh, suffering from effects of uh, coronavirus. Based on facial recognition, sorry, I'm missing a slide here. Uh, based on facial recognition, we can also detect uh, face masks or absence of them. And um, I know most of the devices now as well out of the box can, uh, that, that have been specifically developed for this purpose um, have these capabilities. Uh, the advantages of our system is that well, you can add this additional layers of analytics onto pretty much any camera you already have on premises. Um, so as you can see here, this is a, an access control camera uh, or camera by the side of the door. And uh, as the people walking through, uh, it, it detects whether the person's wearing a face mask or not in real time. And um, it doesn't require a person to sign in, touch or anything. So it's a, a passive, uh, well, a, a passively a, a scanning, but actively and proactively uh, reacting to, to the environment. Um, so you can add this an additional analytics to your existing real estate, to your existing cameras uh, with just um, installing the software. All the violations are as well recorded and uh, can be produced in the reports. We have got a very powerful engine that is based on human behavior analytics. And um, this engine allows us to detect the body position and uh, the well, human pose. Um, that way we can w detect 
whether the person is um, sitting down, standing up, but we can also use the same detection to calculate the distance between uh, two individuals or a group of people. And as soon as the uh, individuals close that, that proximity, so they, they, they breach the social distancing uh, rule, we can automatically generate an alert and um, send, a, send a trigger to a third party system or produce a report based on that. Um, all these tools are available in our standard Axon Next VMS. The interface is exactly the same as you are used to if you've already been using AxonSoft. The integration with fewer screen cameras allows us to achieve accurate rates uh, for body temperature reads. Uh, we can actually detect faces as well as temperatures uh, from a single camera. And uh, we, we, within the same interface, you, you've got um, a very intuitive user, uh, intuitive in, uh, user experience where um, you can react instantly to a dangerous situation and stop spread the COVID. Most obviously, the uh, I just want to mention the accuracy of the thermal uh, thermal uh, temperature reads all depend on the camera capabilities. So this is not actually done by the software; it's done by the uh, by the camera itself. Uh, however, we are um, digesting the, the data that the camera sends to us um, and uh, producing meaningful and uh, and interactive interface uh, and uh, functionality. We can also ignore things like um, other objects um, that might have high temperatures, such as um, cups of coffee or anything else that is not a person's face. So that way only a facial or a head temperature is measured, uh, increasing the accuracy levels as well. Like I mentioned, all these rules uh, and all these reactions are possible due to the, our macros engine. We can actually configure a very um, detailed rules or response to, to the situation. Uh, here's a quick video of showing you how we can achieve this. Uh, it's uh, very intuitive. So all you have to do is um, drag and drop or uh, drop down menus. So that way, um, pretty much anyone uh, can create complex uh, automated responses uh, without having the programming experience. So we have got some questions from Mahmoud Wahid. Um, just want to answer that. So any, uh, he's asking, any camera can be integrated for the fever screening or the camera should have itself the video analytics for the camera detection. Um, the uh, fever screening is, is not done by the software. Um, I don't think there is any software that has that capability. Um, it's not actually done by the camera itself. However, we are um, understand the data the camera is sending to us and we can react to it. So the, yeah, it's, it would have to be a, a thermal camera that does the fever screen, screening. So um, as I mentioned, I just wanted to introduce you to the, to the, some of the features that we, we have produced for uh, COVID-19. It was meant to be a very quick webinar to Give you some insight and i was hoping that um we can uh, start a conversation with you guys and uh, maybe ask answer some of your more relative questions uh hence why i move to the q a section quickly um so i'd like to open um this to you and um you can use the chat um 
start asking me questions and then what we'll do is uh, I'll, I'll maybe move back and forth between the uh, the slides and uh, I'll try and answer as much information as possible. Anyone has any questions regarding the thermal cameras or? Do you, by the way, has, does everyone hear me okay? Um, I know this is late in the, in the webinar, but um, just want to double check. Yeah, of course, well, we'll share the, the PowerPoint presentation. Um, we also have all this information available on our website. If you've uh, been to our website, um, let, me, let me try and show you. So um, if you uh, type in the, in, a, in the URL stopcovid19.axonsoft.com, uh, you will see this landing page and uh, you'll, you can find all the information that I've just been mentioned as well in the, in the very nice layout with videos that you can play. Um, and um, you can share this with your colleagues as well. We've got some additional information at the bottom, um, like this mainly around the um, capacity occupancy monitoring. And uh, it just talks about the way our people counting works. So as I mentioned, we, we set two zones uh, for people tracking. And uh, what we can do is count from a single camera uh, entry and exit. And uh, we can use this on multiple ent um, entry entrances and exits and uh, produce a, a collective overview of the whole um, of, the, of the whole premises is anyone else any more questions um, We, uh, by the way, we've also been uh, working close with Intel and um, um, other manufacturers to make sure our, all our analytics are uh, very efficient in terms of utilizing the, the hardware. And that way, all these uh, advanced um, video analytics based on neural networks, such as the um, uh, social distancing and facial recognition, they are all um, can use uh, Intel um, Open Vino toolkit, and meaning that we can actually um, deploy the software on a, a very uh, cheap and small hardware. So you do not need servers to be able to handle um, camera feeds and uh, to be able to use these kind of analytics. We have got support for Windows and uh, Linux environments as well. So that way you've got the flexibility of deploying the software. On, uh, on your preferred operating systems. Um, uh, right, so we've got a question. Uh, can a facial recognition feature be used for contact tracing? Um, yes, uh, we, because we're capturing the data, we can actually correlate the data as well. So if we have got uh, people that have been detected uh, 
simultaneously. Uh, we could potentially use the timestamps and correlated data to uh, to people that might have come into contact with the with the person with high temperature. Um, we might require some customization from our reporting um, engine, but yes, it's possible. Um, we have got another question. Uh, please share a list of all thermal cameras that are integrated with Axon. Um, we can absolutely get the list of cameras. Uh, let me just show you where you can download this. So if we go to axonsoft.com, so over here you can go into the support and then you go into driver pack. And this webinar is taking most of my bandwidth, so it's taking a bit of a while. But what you can do is, uh, if you go to Driver Pack and you download the release notes, what that will do is um, show you all the cameras that have been integrated, and there are some filters you can use to filter out the ones that relate to thermal uh, thermal cameras or specifically body temperature cameras. Um, Kapil is asking uh, also how many cameras can be handled by the, uh, by the gra graphics card or the, uh, by the system. Um, the, it's, it's a, it all depends on the, on, on the resolutions we're working with and uh, the activity in the scene. Um, so we can help you calculate the requirements um, if you have got uh, a, a specific um, project in, in mind and you want to find out uh, what the hardware requirements would be for that project uh, we've got a team of, uh, of engineers uh, who can who can help you with that obviously we have got tools on our website that you can use or you can also uh, at any point contact us and uh, we will we will work with you to to figure that out and uh, make sure the system uh, performs uh, at the best as well and uh, uh, it's cost effective. So the um, Bill is also asking the um, details of the Intel GPU. So uh, we tend to use for neural networks. We tend to use Open Video Toolkit which is uh, my videos and ARIA chipsets. Uh, they're specifically designed for video and uh, neural networks. So it's not uh, a GPU in, in, in the sense um, that it will, you know, like uh, NVIDIA cards, um, it's, it will use, um, it will be used specifically for those kind of analytics. Um, we've got another question where at the, in the human behavior analytics, hope we can define the distance of social distancing like one meter, one and a half meter. Um, so yeah, we can, we can customize the, um, the distance. There is, um, we use a, a tool where we can give a depth perception to, to the system and uh, we, alongside of that, we can, we can customize uh, the, the distance between the two individuals as well. Um, please, please feel free to type in the chat or uh, in the Q&A session. Um, to, to ask any questions you might have regarding the, regarding the fair COVID-19 solutions. Yes, absolutely. We, um, so sorry, we've got another question for, uh, regarding Vivitech cameras. Uh, we, yes, we, we support Vivitech cameras and, uh, we can, we can, we can work with them. So, um, I'm not sure whether Vivitech cameras have got any thermal cameras um, 
that we've got integrated. However, the, we, we, we work with the tech cameras and we have done in the past as well. So we've got another uh, question from Kapil. Um, I'm just going to read it out. It, in one of your presentations, you had mentioned that Intel partnership allows you to run 64 cameras on a single GPU. Does that mean if we install three to four GPUs on an i7, can we run over 200 plus analytics channels on i7? Um, potentially, yes. Um, I'm going to maybe try and jump to another presentation. Uh, and I'll show you the cards we were talking about. And there's another question, how many softs uh, did you store since COVID-19? Um, I don't have that figure at my, um, right now for, at hand, but we can certainly get a figure for you. Um, and if you're spe uh, specific in your region or if you want uh, case studies where we can, we can get that figure for you. So I'm having some check technical issues here. Um, for some reason, the presentation is not opening, but we can share this information post post webinar as well uh, with uh, Intel Quick uh, Sync and Intel OpenVINO uh, graphics cards. We um, is also asking uh, the calculator we have uh, for analytics. So in our on our website, we do have um, a hardware calculator that you can use to calculate the hardware requirements. And um, this calculator does ac accommodate the uh, analytics and the graphics cards as well. So, or the GPUs uh, that we use. So we, we can, you know, we can certainly use that to figure out what the, uh, what the processor requirements would be. Oh, here we go. The, uh, the presentation is just open now. Um, so these are the graphics cards I was mentioning. So these, these Intel videos and Intel ARIA chipsets are able to process a lot of uh, analytics. So just to mention the Intel uh, compute stick is um, USB stick, it can be deployed pretty much anywhere. And um, depending on the resolution and the activity in the camera, we, from our test, we've calculated uh, it can support up to 20 cameras with uh, neural networks. Um, and uh, obviously, if you need a lot more cameras uh, on a bigger service, uh, you can use this uh, PCI Express cards that you can put in and you've got uh, different options when, um, when, when you purchase them. Um, some of them come with two, four, or eight chipsets. And obviously, depending on how many chipsets you've got on, on the card will uh, depend how many cameras you can process. And uh, in most cases, when, whenever you're adding more cameras or enabling analytics on already existing Axon Soft system, by adding this camera will uh, save you adding another server into the system so you can save cost on the hardware quite dramatically. Has anyone got any more questions? Um, okay. I must say, I'm, I do apologize. Uh, it's one of my first uh, 
webinars where I, I'm the only one who's presenting and uh, usually I'm uh, used to having an interactive uh, conversation with, with my participants. Um, uh, we've got uh, another question from Kapil. The how do we calculate on your office? Is there a specific one for analytics? Uh, there's several options you can use on the calculator. Um, there's some, let me see if I can demonstrate this for you. So if you go to the action soft and uh, support and go to hardware calculator, you will see a page like this. Now, when you add in cameras in the detector mode, uh, you can specify whether you'd like to use uh, video content analytics, which is your neural, neural uh, analytics with the GPU uh, or neural tracker. And it will accommodate this in the calculation of the CPU once you apply those, those settings. As I mentioned, um, if you need specifics uh, about uh, a, a project, please contact us and uh, we will be able to help you with that. Yeah, so, okay, I could do that kind of to show us once. So uh, well, what we'll do is, um, so by default, we've got like I said, 10 cameras and uh, two megapixel and um, we've got a substream. Now, uh, most of the time, substream is uh, sufficient enough to do the detection. So if we're doing neural analytics, uh, we can just enable video content analytics with neural filter, press tick, and that will apply the, the selection. And now we can see uh, the breakdown of each uh, type of a um, CPU and how much the load the CPU will experience using uh, based on the book cameras and the book analytics and uh, how much RAM you would need and, and so on. And obviously, if you already have an existing hardware, you can, uh, if you don't find it in the list, you can try and search for it in here by just typing say an i7 and it will give you an option to find your processor uh, in the list. And then once you add it to the platform, it will go to the bottom and uh, you will see how this particular CPU, uh, how much load it will experience um, on using these cameras or trying to analyze these cameras with the neural networks. I hope, I hope that answered your question. If not, please, please uh, ask me more questions. I, I really don't mind. And, uh, and uh, there's another question, how about the GPU recommendations on the, on the calculator? Do you mean the actual um, versions of a GPU? Uh, we don't have that um, on, on the calculator itself. Um, however, we, we, can, we can recommend it or on the project specifics because um, as you can imagine, um, depending on the analytics that we're using and uh, the cameras that we're processing, uh, there, there might be too many variables to try accommodate in the calculator. The calculator is mainly used to give you a generic understanding of uh, a system uh, requirements or system load. And uh, if you need more accurate and specific uh, calculations, we can do that with you and we can help you. By the way, if you do uh, prefer to use um, some manufacturers like uh, Promis or Secure Logic Service, as well as Resilient and ECD Video, um, you can also see um, how much load each of the uh, code or, you know, the version of the server will will experience as well using the cameras and uh, the parameters we say above. We have another question saying, so when you choose the DCA with the GPU and the detector, should the system load be on the GPU? Um, it shows load on the CPU, right? Um, so yes, um, it will. So the, the GPU will uh, re reduce the load on, on the CPU. Um, so that's why we, we're not showing the load on the, on the GPU uh, because again, it, depending on the GPU, um, that load will vary. And uh, we um, 
hence why just, just the CPU has been mentioned in, in our calculator. And uh, but if we uh, disable, um, say if we change this parameter to just a, a, a neural with the CPU, see how much the, the load increased already. So without the GPU, um, the, the CPU load is a lot higher. And in some instances, it actually increases the number of services you require to be able to process that amount of cameras. <laughs> Kapil, uh, uh, you're saying last question, but I really don't mind. You can ask make as many questions as you want. Um, so can you just share the typical benchmark of a number of cameras per GPU? Um, again, it's, it's a, a very open-ended question. Um, depending on the how many cameras and the resolution of the cameras, the frame rate and the activity, uh, the, the, the number of cameras per GPU will vary. Um, but in, if, if you want, we can, we can engage with you afterwards and um, maybe we can, we can show you some, some examples. Does anyone else have any more questions? Um, if nobody else has any more questions, um, I guess we can. Oh, uh, Kapil, well, thank you very much uh, for your questions, Kapil. I appreciate uh, your questions as well. And um, if nobody else has any more questions, then uh, I guess we can we can finish this webinar. We will share this recording and some additional information around this. Um, yes, we can uh, share the, the presentation with you as well um, in the follow up. And um, if you have any uh, questions afterwards, um, please feel free to get in touch with us and uh, we can give you more specific information. We can help you with calculations of, of hardwares or finding solutions for your, for your projects. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you have a great day.